Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video I'm going to be talking to you all about protection policies in Microsoft Purview, another quite recent feature within that portal. Before we get into it though, there is one thing I'd like to quickly share with you. I have added a brand new feature to my membership perks on the channel and I'd love for you to check it out. Now, to take advantage of this uh, feature, you need to join the channel as a senior member, which is $5.99 per month. I already have a good number of wonderful senior members, and I do hope you consider joining them. Now, this perk already gets you access to a lot of great things, and you can check this out by clicking on the Join button on my channel. And the extra perk that I'm adding is a bi-weekly, or fortnightly, as we say in Britain, a Teams call with all of my senior members. Now, we're going to use this as a bit of a drop-in session, a, a clinic, a surgery, if you like, where we can talk about things, Microsoft 365, and I can try and help where I can, and we can share our knowledge and exchange uh, experience and also just have a general chat between us so I do hope you like that idea I do hope you'll consider joining this little community that we have going here so have a think about that in the meantime let's get on with the video Protection policies are a new feature within Microsoft Purview. To find them, we need to go into Solutions and go down to Information Protection. Let's take a look under Policies, and here you'll see some familiar features that we've talked about on this channel before, which are label publishing policies, where you can publish sets of labels to the users and groups you select, and auto-labeling policies, which apply sensitivity labels to content based on sensitive information types that are matched. Here we have something new that's in preview, and it's called Protection Policies, which you can use to set up policies to control access to items that have sensitivity labels applied across data sources such as Azure, Amazon S3, and more. As ever, there is some good learn content which shows you how to get started with protection policies in Purview, and you can see the actions that are supported along with the data sources. So we've got Azure sources like SQL databases, blob storage, data lake storage, and Microsoft Fabric. There are some prereqs, so you're going to need E5 licenses, and uh, you can check this out for yourself. We'll not dwell too much and, uh, and drain this article. With that said, let's take a look at uh, creating our new policy. Now, what you can do is you can set up recommended policies based on what you've already got configured in your Azure uh, environment or, uh, or, or probably within the data map or the data catalog, right, from within Purview. But I don't have any recommended policies right now, so it's just not detecting anything relevant or it's not quite there. So I'm going to have to do this manually if I'm going to do it at all. So I'm going to put in uh, a protection policy for MS Fabric, which I happen to know because I had a sneaky look at this. It's going to be able to detect it. So I'm going to be lazy as ever, not put a description in. Please do if you're doing this for real. And let's go ahead. Now, what we need to do here is choose our sensitivity label. So the policy is going to detect items that have the label applied and stored in the data sources that you specify in the next step. So you can only select one label per policy. So if we add a sensitivity label, let's pick on confidential, for example, one per policy. So that's all we can do. We can change that if we want to. We are then going to go for next. And here we can see we can uh, click on Microsoft Fabric. That's the only option I've got here. And that from memory is because I've played about with some Fabric content in my, in my tenant within the data map. I haven't got anything connected to any of those other data sources we saw, like Azure, uh, S3, or whatever else. So Fabric it is. Fabric it is. Now, what's it telling me here? Fabric doesn't support policies that are applied to other data sources. So to protect items in Fabric, create a separate policy scoped only to that source. Alrighty, let's go next and see what happens. Now we've got to define our access control settings. And here it's telling me that except for the users and groups that you add below, this policy will prevent everyone from accessing existing and future assets that have the label applied 
in the data sources you specified. So in this case, the confidential label is applied in the fabric data source that I specified. So we can allow users to retain read access. Uh, users and groups you add here won't be prevented from having read access to the labeled assets, provided they already have uh, read permissions. Or you can allow the same sort of thing for users retaining full control. They won't be prevented from having full control, provided they already have those permissions. Now, if you click Next here, it won't let you do anything because you, you actually have to select one of these at least. So I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to put myself in and then we should be able to move forward. So let's click on next. And then we've got a simple turn this on or keep this off. So I'm going to turn it on. Let's see what happens. So a quick review of our settings and the name of our policy is MS Fabric. It's going to detect labeled content, uh, labeled as confidential, and it's going to allow the editor access to one user, which was me, and no groups, and the mode is on. So we're going to submit that, create it, and uh, in a few seconds that should complete. Nice and simple. And it might take 30 minutes to start detecting and protecting those labeled items uh, within Fabric that we have uh, specified. So, so there we are. We've got a protection policy set up there. I might explore this a little bit more as it grows and things get out of preview. And I might have to play around with adding some uh, content for Azure and see if we can get any additional data sources that we can add more protection policies here because they can only use Fabric at the moment. But Nifty, I think that's uh, looking like it could be uh, a good natural extension of a lot of the sort of what I would call the more azure type purview features that are all in this unified portal these days that relate to the data catalog, the data map. And I think it's only going to grow and grow. And uh, if it's uh, something that you can use effectively and without having to use those pesky SCUs, then I'm all for it. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Do give this video a like if you've enjoyed it. Remember to hit the subscribe button as you do so and hit that join button too. Check out the membership perks, especially the senior member perks that I described earlier in the uh, video at the start where you can get on a, a fortnightly call with me and other senior members. In the meantime, I'm going to wish you uh, to stay safe, uh, travel well, be happy and take care of yourselves. And I will see you on the next video very, very soon. Bye for now.